hello and welcome back to another CAD video. Uh, today I'm actually going to be showing from start to finish a design for a special one-off project that I'm doing for Max Verstappen. He had asked me to do a Porsche 911 Super Cup steering wheel with the display integrated into the wheel and uh, now that uh, after a couple months of trying to get caught up on orders I'm to the point where on the side after a uh, you know, day's work, I can work on this. And uh, I think it'd be fun to show kind of from start to finish the whole process of the design, prototyping, and then uh, the assembly as well. So what I did in this first part is uh, just get the basic components um, drawn up in CAD so I can kind of figure out how I want to get the display mounted. And what I, what I did was I got a, a good reference photo online and I was able to scale it because I know that that bolt pattern is 70 millimeters so I could get it perfectly to scale and then just started um, using the uh, sketch and uh, and basically tracing out the front plate where the buttons would be and uh, I can kind of b build everything out from there. Uh, the button that's being used is APEM IPR 3 SAD buttons. It's the um, it's the buttons that I use in all my wheels and it's cool seeing that this is what the uh, Porsche Super Cup wheel uses as well so that's what will be uh, obviously using here for this project uh, too and so, so after getting the um, basic layout of the front plate I can work on the controller and where I'm going to mount that I was trying to figure out if I was able if I'd be able to get just the uh, Leo Bodner BU0 836 controller uh, without having the breakout board since uh, you know there's really not that many buttons and rotaries and things like that on this wheel but uh, for the real one it has each uh, each button is individually wired out and uh, and in order to not have the breakout board I'd have to jump the ground from button to button and I really didn't want to do that so I'm going to be using the breakout board for this as well the main differences between the real steering wheel and what this one will be is just going to be the hub because the real steering wheel doesn't have the controller integrated into the wheel it just all goes out through the coiled cable to the car and so for this one i have the controller it, it's going to be um, in the wheel and so i have to have a, a little bit longer hub for that to fit inside of and once I got the mounting holes for the controller figured out where that was going to go, I was working on the uh, shifter paddle mounting holes. I'm going to be using the Precision Sim Engineering shifter paddles. They're pretty good. I wouldn't say they're the best on the market, but I would say they're probably the closest uh, for a one-to-one -one for what the Porsche wheel is using here. And then it is just a, a carbon fiber plate and uh, carbon fiber shifter paddles and then i'll have a uh, carbon fiber rear plate for the uh, lumber connector which i use on all my wheels and in here there the coiled cable is um it's not detachable but i like to do a use a lumber connector that can detach and then um, so it's a USB on one end and then the coiled cable and then the lumbered con connector on the other end for sim racing just because you know if that ever does get damaged you don't have to replace or send back the whole wheel I can just send out a new cable that way but uh, yeah for the most part I'm going to try to have this as close to a one-to-one -one as possible I'm also going to be using um, like motorsport heat shrink tubing and uh, booting I'm going to show how that whole process is to actual race spec versus uh you know kind of trying to be uh, like hobby level because um the there's a big difference between you know obviously race spec and the race spec components versus kind of hobby level and uh, more entry level type stuff and that's where the the costs start to increase so it'll be fun to show um you know what the cost differences are and why you know a lot of times these higher end wheels are more expensive even though you know on the surface it might just look like it is uh, pretty basic. Once I had an idea of where the shifters would go, I started working on the hub. And uh, I'm thinking this is probably going to be a part that I will outsource and I'm gonna have it 
SLS 3D printed, which is pretty common for, um, you know, kind of high end or, uh, you know, sometimes you see SLS printing in, uh, in motorsport as well, like on the uh, Vantage GTE wheel. They were using some SLS 3D printing, but uh, yeah, a lot of times it's if they have plastic parts, they'll just do an injection molding, but that's where costs really get kind of high. And that's why, you know, those steering wheels in the real cars are, um, you know, 10 to $15,000. And uh, we're trying to make, you know, one-to-one -one products at uh, a tenth of that price. But with this one, I'm going to be using, um, you know, higher end components. And so, uh, yeah, it'll be fun to show, uh, Kind of what the cost of that is and and, and why high-end custom work like this um, is you know what it, is the price that it is once i had a basic layout of the uh, hub and how it's going to fit it in between those shifters i started working on these slots that all have the wires routed into and going to the controller so i just um you know extruded out those slots and then put a fill in there to make it look a little bit cleaner and uh, a little bit more uh, subtle and uh, once i had the hub done i just quickly extruded out the rear plate and that'll be carbon fiber as well and this is something that also the real wheel doesn't have but uh, you know it's a it's a compromise that we have to make for sim racing but it'll be uh, quite close and uh, after i had the main components finished I was trying to figure out and plan how I was going to get the display and how I was going to mount that. And I didn't have a good drawing of a display. And so I, I imported one from um, another design just to maybe try to eyeball it and see how it would work. But I think for this project, the best way will be to um, go ahead and 3D print the components that I have. And then once that string wheel comes in, I'll be able to put it all together and I'll be showing that process. And then the display that I have, I purchased uh, from Polola Instruments. And I'm going to figure out how to just mount that um, once I have everything, you know, actually physically in hand. And I can I can kind of look and see what would the best way to do that. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, in part two. I'll be 3D printing the parts and, uh, and you know, seeing how everything fits. And then I can figure out how I want to mount that display. And uh, we'll be kind of going from there. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be probably a one-off project. If people are interested, they certainly could reach out. I don't think I'm going to have it um, on the website. But, uh, yeah, thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.